here. Thank you. Very welcome to this debate, uh, Mrs. Dali. Thank uh, you for organizing this. It's it's uh, very engaging. Uh, I, I thank the previous speakers for, for their uh, very good and meaningful presentations and the, even the poll you were taking before and and i i, I see that uh, um, your your uh, participants to the poll think that the commission is not doing i mean 30 percent only think that the commission is doing enough so so that is very uh meaningful uh, okay this is not a scientific poll i take it right but uh uh, it is. It is. Uh, it, it is also. Uh, it means something also to 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 us, and and it fills me up with more courage and and vigor to really see see that the strategy which we launched uh, last March uh, will 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 be implemented in a very <clears throat> meaningful way. So I. I'm taking the liberty this morning to start by quoting a, a, a strong pillar of gender equality, um, Simone de Beauvoir, who said, never forget that a political, economic, or religious crisis will be enough on women's rights. These rights will never be vested. You will have to stay vigilant your whole life. So indeed, every crisis shakes our foundations and the coronavirus is no different. It has, hang on, it has accentuated and aggravated existing inequalities and revealed uh, ingrained discrimination. We thus must be vigilant that the pandemic is not an excuse to push equality issues aside or to backpedal on gender equality achievements gained so far. On the contrary, gender equality policies are more relevant than ever before, and we need to use the particular circumstances of this crisis as an opportunity to continue the positive trend towards gender equality, which the EU has made over the last decades. But obviously, it is never enough. The impact of the coronavirus crisis has shown to affect women and girls disproportionately, as we have been hearing, be it socially, economically, or in terms of gender-based violence. And while there is a gendered impact, our response must be gender sensitive too, when it comes to policies and investment. As I said, on, on the 5th of March, I presented the Gender Equality Strategy 2020-2025. It is an ambitious strategy which underpins our political commitment to achieving gender equality in all its facets. It is thus the perfect tool for driving forward the EU's recovery from the coronavirus crisis. The strategy is built around three key pillars, to be free, to thrive, and to lead. In a gender equal Europe, we can all be free, thrive, and lead fulfilling lives. And these three pillars are crucial for steering the EU's response and recovery to the current health crisis. We have to make sure that women and sí, men no all are diverse. Is there something wrong? I was hearing someone speak. Anyhow, we have to make sure that women and men in all our diversity can shape our lives free from stereotypes and free from gender-based violence and harassment. During the pandemic, home has not been proven to be a safe space for everyone. The risk of domestic violence has increased, with many women and children confined at home with abusive partners. I have called on member states to provide sufficient measures to prevent abuse and to keep support and protection services running for, vi for victims, including helplines and shelters, 
to be considered as essential services. I also called on continuing to implement the obligations as set out in EU law on victims' rights. The Victims' Rights Directive requires governments to ensure that victims of gender-based violence have access to protection and support. And soon, the Commission will present a victims' rights strategy to address the specific needs of victims of gender-based violence, including domestic violence. Concluding the EU's accession to the Istanbul Convention remains a key priority. Nonetheless, as you know, serious hurdles remain. I am committed to overcoming them, but the reality is that there are six member states who are refusing to ratify the convention, uh, and therefore uh, it is these member states who we have to convince. During the pandemic, the Commission set up a webinar addressing domestic violence. 23 member states took part in this exchange of good uh, practices. The second pillar of the gender equality strategy ensures that women and men can at work, be paid fairly for their work, and are equally able to combine it with private duties. And again, the pandemic has highlighted the vital role of women in the labor market. Women have been providing the most basic and essential services throughout. But the pandemic has also exposed the disproportionate representation, the disproportionate representation of women in low paid work and precarious working conditions. Both contributing towards the gender pay gap and eventually the pensions gap. So the gender equality strategy presents actions to close the gender pay gap as a priority. And therefore, I will be presenting binding pay transparency measures later this year as one of the first deliverables and steps in closing the pay gap. Obviously, to, uh, to address the pay gap, we need to have pay transparency. You cannot uh, address something if you don't know what it is in, in, in terms of quantifying it. And that is why the first step is a transparency measure. The crisis has also highlighted the balance measures when staying at home to avoid the spread of the, the their families. However, due to closure of schools and care services and suspension of other outsourced domestic services, women have taken up a higher proportion of care responsibilities while working from home. So the office at home presents a challenge for gender equality and the more equal sharing of care duties and thus highlights the importance of affordable and high quality childcare. We've been speaking about Olaf Palm these, these days, and, and he had set the example of a childcare, but we have also it's, it's, it's not just childcare, but we may. Yeah. So in this regard, the Commission is helping member, member states to implement the Work-Life Balance Directive adopted last year, and we will closely monitor the, uh, the results. The third pillar of the gender equality strategy is about women and men should have equal opportunities to lead. We've seen the pictures of Madame Lagarde surrounded by, by men, and there are many other uh, similar pictures. It, it was a very familiar picture for, for me in, in, a, in, a, in government cabinets um, full of, of, of men. So I have lived that reality. Uh, it is not so now in, in the commission where, where uh, we are nearly 50% um, uh, women there. So, so that is very encouraging. And, and, and the, the president um, uh, 
uh, Ursula von der Leyen wanted to set the tone and set the example by having a balanced, uh, a gender balanced commission and also by having for the first time a portfolio dedicated uh, entirely to equality. So uh, in the strategy, we speak about the equal opportunities uh, to lead, be it in society, in companies, in politics. So it is important to ensure the participation of women and women's organizations in decision making, including uh, the crisis right now and recovery responses. During the German presidency, we'll, we will work on gender balance on corporate boards. And I will also do what is necessary to facilitate member states exchange of good practices on this matter. We are working to deliver on the strategies, objectives and actions knowing that a more gender equal Europe will be a more resilient Europe that leaves no one behind. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner uh, Helena Dali, uh, for this uh, insightful contribution. Uh, I would like to take this moment uh, for a family picture as announced before, so that our Pecha Kucha speakers can also then uh, get off the, the virtual stage uh, and then we can uh, continue in an interaction with our audience that has been sending uh, questions through the, uh, to the Zoom chat box as well as Facebook Live. So in the meantime, I encourage uh, every participant to keep on sending uh, their questions because this is their unique opportunity to interact with the Commissioner for Equality. So please wear your brightest smile and now is the, the final moment. All right, uh, I think uh, that uh, the team must have, uh, must have taken um, the, the picture. So uh, on that note, uh, I would like to, uh, to move on then uh, to, the, to the more interactive part of, uh, of this session. As mentioned before, please, uh, I'm, I'm speaking here also to the audience, do not hesitate to engage very uh, actively with us uh, throughout uh, this session. Um, dear Commissioner, uh, you have been uh, very crucial in highlighting also um, uh, how uh, the, the European Union intends uh, to, uh, to make gender equality one, one, of, the key, uh, one of the key issues uh, in, the, in the years to come and complementing the, the Pecha Kucha uh, contributions. Uh, so without a doubt, you are a role model for uh, many of us uh, in terms of female leadership, uh, but you are also on your way uh, certainly uh, on uh, becoming one of the new founding mothers of Europe as well. Indeed, uh, being a European Commissioner for Equality, you are not only part of the very first almost uh, gender, gender equal commission, uh, but you are also the very first uh, European Commissioner exclusively in charge of the uh, equality portfolio. And that is something that we as the progressive family uh, could not applause enough. Uh, and as such, uh, we couldn't have a better person with us here today uh, to tell us why now more than ever before Europe needs women for it to become a better place. Uh, I would like to start uh, taking uh, questions from the audience uh, and starting with, uh, with this one. Uh, we have a question from Camille Butin uh, and she's asking you uh, the following question. Uh, sexual reproductive, reproductive health and rights are fundamental rights and, and uh, they are key for gender equality. Access to uh, AIDS, uh, sexual health and reproductive rights have been limited and undermined during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so will access to uh, these rights and health, uh, health rights be part of the EU COVID-19 response? Uh, what do you think about this, Commissioner? Also, uh, in that sense, perhaps I could also uh, ask our team to display the, the results of uh, one of our polls that we conducted at the very beginning, uh, and particularly uh, the poll number Number four. Uh, so this, uh, these results uh, were um, uh, surveyed this morning, and here we can namely see that uh, the participants answered with 45% uh, that the protection of sexual reproductive health and rights uh, should be uh, one of the most critical aspects for the achievements of gender equality. So what are your insights on this, Commissioner? Yes, actually, I was a bit surprised by the 45%. I would have expected 100% there, you know, because, because sexual and reproductive, reproductive rights are of the essence. If we are not in control of that, we are not in control 
of our lives. So, so uh, uh, that 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 really surprised me. But the the, the person I didn't get the name. The person who wrote in, she's she's right that that we had access to um, uh, SRHR during during the uh, pandemic, and and some. I think, I think we, we are, ah, yeah, perfect, you're back. That, that has created serious implications for the women needing these uh, services. And, and we have been looking in, into that and we have been uh, speaking with member states to, uh, oversee this to supervise this and to see that that uh, there is access to to these uh, uh, services we also see saw uh, other services being deprioritized for, for instance um, services for trans women needing hormone treatment which sometimes is like the the, the, the treatment so, so uh, this, this pandemic has uh, created um, um, problems with, with in relation to access to SRHR in some member states more than in others. And uh, obviously uh, this is also part of our strategy to see that, that uh, SRHR is, is provided uh, to all the, the uh, women who, who, who need it, SRHR services. And uh, for me, uh, they are very, it's, it's, it's one of the most critical aspects when it comes to speaking of gender equality. All right, thank you for your, for your answer. Um, and uh, I would like, uh, I'm calling here on uh, the, the FEP studio uh, to, to, this, to, to display the, the poll number six as well, because uh, that was quite interesting too, to see what, uh, what, the, uh, what the participants oh, answered. Uh, and it seems they're pretty positive uh, about uh, uh, progressive change uh, towards uh, uh, gender, gender equality. Uh, and in that regard, uh, I would like to ask you a, a question that was posed to us uh, on social media by Pedro, Pedro Mendoza. Uh, and he's asking us what uh, the coronavirus, uh, wh whether the coronavirus was a catalyst to speed up gender equality. Uh, and, um, and whether uh, it was simply uh, an unfortunate circumstance. Well, it is obviously a very sad circumstance that, it, that the, 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 the pandemic happened for everyone. And um, I wouldn't say it was a catalyst because incidentally, we launched our, our strategy on the 5th of March. So uh, we, had been working for the previous since the since the commission started. We had been working on, on, on the strategy, and it was one of the, the first deliverables of the first hundred days of the Van der, of the von der Leyen um, commission. What it did, but as Pedro I think is intending to, to say, is that it highlighted, it accentuated the the gender disparities which uh, exist in our societies. And it really showed how, um, you know, disproportionately women were being affected with this reality. So whilst women were doing most of the jobs of, of nurses, of caring, of being uh, of, in, in supermarkets, so in all the jobs which, which continued, with, and all the jobs which could not be done from home, we could see that many women were there in the front line as, as it's become a hackneyed phrase now to say the women on the front line but really that is what it it is and so when when there's a problem in the world women are there to provide services but then we could see that when when they go back home is there the work-life balance that, that we are uh, aiming to achieve 
No, because we are seeing that many women then started getting mental health problems from the exhaustion at work, going back home, having uh, the children are there, they are not at school, having to cook, having to clean and to do everything. And this exposed a reality which was there, but which was compounded by the pandemic because they were working longer hours at home uh, at work and then going home and having even more work than usual to do because of this new uh, reality so so the, the pandemic really exposed the realities which we have been speaking about for many years that's why we have the work life balance directive because we know that there is that reality that work at home is disproportionately done by women mostly okay that is changing but we have to be very vigilant on member states on how they are implementing the the directive so that should help uh, in the lives of, of families uh, on how to balance to, to to achieve this work life balance but but pedro is is, is right it, it, it did it did accentuate the mm -hmm. the gender imbalance which which there is in our societies um, and uh, here i would like to uh, to follow immediately with another question that was posed to us uh, by uh, Agnès Hubert who is also a member of the FEPS uh, scientific council uh, first of all she's congratulating you for firmly standing firmly on the on the gender equality agenda in these uh, very special times and she's asking uh, how you will ensure that women are equal decision makers and beneficiaries of the european union and uh, national national recovery funds alongside the gender mainstream commitments of member states in the treaties so that is her question uh, yes. what would you answer to that yes yes with regards to the um, recovery funds we have put our our perspective and our input so obviously we are around the table we are involved in the process and we are seeing as you may know we have set up uh, a, a, an equality task force whereby a high ranking official is in every in every commissioner's um, department uh, and 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 the gender the equality perspective is mainstream throughout all the work of the commission so whether we are discussing the budget whether we are this working on the environment whether we are working on digital, there is also this person, there is always this person who is looking at the policy from the very beginning with the equality perspective. So yes, the, the gender equality perspective is in, in the uh, recovery. And the, the other question was on women on boards. We, shall, we are reviving the women on board directive we are preparing already with i am hopeful most you most you okay we, we lost you uh, commissioner are you still there yes I've... uh well uh, here i have a uh, i have another I question sorry so five more minutes five I more minutes stay till 11. okay <laughs> then then we'll be very, very quick and i'll just uh, then follow up with the with the very last question which is a question that actually relates to uh, to yesterday's uh, first part of the call to your program focusing on climate justice uh, and here we have kirsten mayer uh, who is uh, writing the following yesterday during the climate sessions we we've we've heard from the speakers uh, it is particularly difficult to ensure gender equality and women's full participation in areas sh such as finance and technology and climate uh, i would like Ms. Mrs. Dali, um, to I would like to ask Mrs. Dali how we can strengthen gender equality in all areas of work of the European Commission, which is the aim of the new gender equality strategy. Uh, would you have yeah. some examples on that? Well, I preempted this uh, by speaking about As for for me, it is essential to have an expert 
in every area of policy who is looking because then it will be too late if something comes up if a policy comes up uh, for discussion in college and i just get to know and and i read it just before college when we get the the uh, agenda then it will be too late to point out uh, difficulties and discrepancies which with regards to equality and it's not just gender equality I'm, I'm, I'm speaking here about but equality in all of its senses so i may i insisted that we have this task force so that people experts with a with an equality perspective are there in all areas in the environment in digital in 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 the budget they are there at the very beginning at the initiation of a policy of a legislation of whatever it is that the commission is doing okay so they can put the input at the very beginning so we are hoping to see results in this sense and i already see the results in, in the sense that when we're discussing at college i can see that there is already the, the the gender perspective and i must say that we are nearly 50 50 balanced in, in college but i'm very happy also to say that many of our male commissioners are feminists and they are very enthusiastic about about this equality perspective and sometimes they come to tell me themselves listen we had very good input from your person in our cabinet on this particular policy but even had that person not been there i would have made it a point that there is the equality perspective and this would be a male commissioner speaking to me so it's really picking up and it's very encouraging to see the whole college i i think that President von der Leyen has done a wonderful thing in setting the example with, with the Gender Balanced College and also with setting up a portfolio specifically for uh, um, equality, because now if the male commissioners are realizing what an, an important area of policy this is and uh, that they will have better policies with this perspective uh, in, in whatever it is that they are doing so i am hoping and i'm not just hoping you know as in dreaming or that but uh, uh, concretely we are working on this so i think that we will get some some good results in that from from that perspective well uh, on this note commissioner let me uh, on behalf of the whole fabs team warmly uh, thank you for showcasing what women can concretely expect from the european union